Hi, I'm Dr. Chrissy O'Malley, and this is Better Science Teaching. Today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the important components of your uh, introduction and what makes that an important part of your research paper. Every student who's working on a science fair project should have a research paper that's suited to their grade level and their abilities and their uh, capability of doing research. So for a high school student, that's going to look more like um, peer-reviewed journal articles and things that are written by scientists in the field, where if you go down towards uh, third grader, fourth grader, fifth grader, you're probably looking at um, scientific children's books. You may be looking at um, publications that are produced and put in bookstores that are general interest about science. Um, those are usually about the highest for those kids, though some of them are certainly capable of reading peer-reviewed journals, but they're probably going to need a little bit of help to get there either from a teacher or a mentor or a parent. Um, you can check out some of the videos about how to find sources to get information about that for helping kids. Um, I've, I've particularly worked with gifted students that are capable of reading at, at that higher level and being able to digest what it means. So your introduction is going to have a few major components. Keep in mind that this is only a portion of your paper. It does not include your specific methodologies, um, details about your experimentation, your research plan, it doesn't include your data, your analysis, um, or your discussion, or your conclusions. Your introduction is the part that informs your reader about what the things are that they need to know to be able to understand what you were trying to do when you actually did your experiment and you describe your results and your conclusions. The first thing that you're going to want to do in your science fair paper introduction is describe a little bit about what your inspiration was for the project and what your purpose is for it. Now, when I say purpose, your purpose should not be, I wanted to pass my science class. Your purpose should be something towards um, advancing scientific understanding in a certain area. So that's the way you want to you direct that. Um, that, inter that inspiration piece can be first person. So generally when you're writing for a science paper, you want to be in third person. But for this, you can write in first person. You want to make sure that you include after your inspiration, your purpose, a little bit of information um, about the nature and the scope of your project. So what that means generally is you want to kind of put boundaries on what it is you're trying to do. So you want to make sure that we understand what part of the problem you're focusing on. Um, why you put those boundaries there is really informative and in what direction you're hoping to investigate. Next, you're going to want to include a summary of the relevant research. So earlier, if you were following along, you may have done your annotated bibliography or found some preliminary studies. You want to summarize the things that are important so that your reader understands where your project fits into the historical context of this topic so that, that they understand um, why, why you feel the purpose and the inspiration that you did to do your project and where, where it really fits in with the big picture of scientific research and advancement in that area. Next, you're going to want to include in your introduction a very brief statement about what method you're going to use. Are you building a prototype? Are you assessing against goals? Are you um, using surveys or questionnaires? Like, What is your general method that you're going to use and why did you select that? So your introduction is a place where you can include a little bit of relevant background and a little bit of summary about the method that you chose. Now, be careful with this because in your introduction, you don't want to include details about what your actual experiment was. So this should really only be a sentence or two about, about what method you're going to use um, to do your study. There's also a little bit of just debate, I guess, about if you should include any, um, any statements about what you found in your introduction. There are some folks who believe that your introduction is a place where you can um, put, out a, put out a brief statement about what relationships you found. So for instance, if you're looking at the relationship between two variables, you could say as variable A increased, variable D decreased, and just leave it at that. Um, because there's going to be future parts of your paper that describe more about what you found. Um, there are some folks who, when they take a first look at a paper, they read the introduction to, to decide if they want to read the rest of the paper. And if you kind of bury that, um, you may lose your reader. So it's, that's the risk that you run. There are a lot of folks that say never include anything about the methods or the results in your introduction. I'll leave that up to you. Yeah teachers out there if you're in this with your students 
Um, you can make that choice for them or you can leave it up to them. I go ahead and allow students to decide if they want to include that or not. And then I look at it with them to make sure that they're using it appropriately. Now, keep in mind, my students are doing this assignment to write their introduction late September, early October. They have not done their research plan. They have not collected any data. So this is not something that they can even include because they haven't done the experiment yet. So when my students are writing this for me in October, it's not even possible to include that. They might be able to leave a space for it, but they can't include it there. Um, lastly, I encourage students to post a hero statement at the end of their introduction. And the purpose of your hero statement is to say, just to put out your hypothesis, what you think is going to happen, and, and make sure that you set up your introduction so that as you go through the history and the methods and other things that have been done in that topic area, that by the time you get to the end, people are saying to themselves, of course, this is the next obvious thing that needs to happen in studying this subject. Now the student is going to do that. And so they're setting it up to say, I am the one who will take the next step in this subject area. And here comes my research paper. Please keep reading. So those are the things you need to include. For my students, um, I have a whole checklist that we use. So the, the general pattern in my class is when a portion of their paper is assigned, they're going to bring in a draft. We're going to do some peer review on that draft. And then a week later, their final draft is due to me. And I jump in on the peer review and I look at things. So I kind of help them out with that because I want their paper to be as best as it can be. Um, I'm filming these in the 2020-2021 school year. So this is our big, you know, we're fully aware that a lot of fairs are probably going to be virtual next year. So the paper is important because if that goes out to judges and judges can't address students, that's going to be where they go for the answers to questions. And so particularly this year, we need our students to be good paper writers um, so that judges look at their projects and they understand all the great things that they did. We don't want poor writing to get in the way of students progressing through these competitions if that's what their goals are. Um, so some of the things that I do with my, my personal students, we're in the state of Ohio and, um, here in Ohio, we have the Ohio Journal of Science. And so I encourage them to follow the author guidelines as best as they can, as what fits with a high school student to, um, follow the author guidelines of the Ohio Journal of Science. The idea there is that if a student gets to the end of their project and they say, you know, this is great. I want to publish it. It's ready to go. They can send it to the Ohio Journal of Science if they want. And they have published high school work there before. Um, generally my students are also using APA formatting, uh, they're publishing or they're, they're producing about a thousand words, about four pages for their introduction, which really isn't that much. Um, sometimes students get really wound up on that, that number of words. I tell them if they find that they're about to put filler in there, when they bring their paper to their workshop, say, Hey, my paper's short, I need some more stuff. Um, and then talk to their peers or talk to me about, hey, are there any topics that I'm missing? Because it's pretty easy to look at a two or three page paper and identify based on the problem the student has presented, what information they need to include that they may not have included. Uh, so that's, that's a pretty easy thing to do. And I think that it's valuable for teaching students that maybe what's important is not just going for the page number, but it's making sure that all the words that you use are intentional and meaningful and relevant to the project at hand. So I hope that helps you when you write your introduction for your research paper. And I hope that your science fair project is going great so far. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I try to address them as best as I can. Um, and I hope that you subscribe and keep up with us this year. I'll see you later. Be safe. Be well. I'll see you soon. Bye.